Well, we have to do the news. And um, before we do that, though, let me tell you, Kojo is here. Kojo, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Daddy Roro. Nice yeah. to see you. Yeah, start mm. the news for us. Why not? All right. Now, in our first story, President Ikufuado has urged the first batch of free SHS students to shame his opponents by excelling in their final exam next year. Uh, the first set of beneficiaries uh, will be sitting there wasi in June, July 2020, addressing students of the Havasini Senior High School in the Jomoro district of the Western region. The president said the success of the free SHS program depends on their success in the final exam. And I want you to make it your aim to put to shame all those people in this country, some of them important people in Ghana, who didn't want the free senior high school policy. I want you, by your results next year, to put them to shame and let them know that they were wrong in opposing the policy. They say that deeds speak more louder than words. So your deeds. When next year's exam, uh, exams are declared, that was what will speak. That indeed, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado's government was right in instituting the free senior high school policy. Back here in Accra, the Minister of Education, Dr. Matthew Puku Prempe, says first and second year students in various senior high schools will continue to run the double track system, except in schools where infrastructural projects have since been completed in good time to start the next academic year. He was speaking at the Meet the Press series. So that choice Ghanaian kids exercise has made it, brought that imperative, that even though we have 700 senior high schools, it's only 395 that have double track status because they are the schools that kids want to go there. So if I'm an infrastructure planner, I'll plan to increase the infrastructure in those schools whilst bringing up the other schools as model schools. That, that is exactly what we are doing. So this 804 infrastructure projects that are happening in secondary schools are happening in all the secondary schools, but concentrated more where the double track exists. And we hope that as we complete those infrastructure, we will take the kids off double track into a single track. Because it's not one year. So this year, cabinet decided that we'll, the second years will continue with the double track. And every individual institution that the contractor finishes the infrastructure projects there will take that school back to single track, those who are in second year. So only first years will continue with the, with the double track. But first years and second years, this incoming year, we we'll do double track as a general principle. But those that we finish the work will move to single track. And on the policy barring students from using mobile phones while on campus, which has resulted in some serious riots forcing the closure of some schools, the Minister of Education said the Ghana Education Service will soon review it. Mobile phones. Because even in advanced countries, you can't use mobile phones while the teaching and learning is continuing. What we have to do is to be realistic. We have a facility, a program, a technology called iBox that we are putting in places in most secondary schools that we have a plan to trickle it down to junior high schools. One of the deep dive studies we found is that when you go to the school that we have put iBox there, the kids are not utilizing it. And this iBox contains lectures and lecturers teaching difficult subjects, even doing virtual laboratories and things like that, where it, it really levels the playing field. And the kids are still not being able to use it because Ghana Education Service has a policy you can't bring mobile phones into school. And how is the kid going to interact with a system when you need Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? So we've looked around. Then we found the school, Accra Wesley Girls, that the head, and that's what we call leadership, the head has agreed with the kids. You will come to school with your mobile phones, but when you get to school, take out your chips. It's learning and teaching time so that you can interact through Wi-Fi with a system. And it's working. It has the highest rate. So I know that the Ghana Education Service is coming out with a policy on the use of mobile technology 
in, in, in their schools. So we hope that they hurry up on that. Now to Parliament, where the minority is demanding a detailed breakdown of the $4.5 million spent on the Ghanaian delegation to the just-ended AFCON tournament in Egypt. Now the Black Stars, tipped as pre-tournament favourites, suffered a round of 16 exit, dashing the hopes of many football lovers. Now, prior to the departure of the team, there were calls for their budget to be made public, but that was not done, prompting members of parliament to demand detailed briefing by the sports minister. Now, in a statement on the floor of the House on Wednesday, the sports minister Isaac Isiyama said, out of an amount of $6.3 million earmarked for the team's campaign, $4.5 million was spent, uh, leading to a saving of $1.7 million as a result of the 116th exit. Out of $6 million, $365,033.84 was approved for the tournament comprising training tour, main tournament and related activities. Now the actual expenditure, Mr. Speaker, emphasis actual expenditure, Mr. Speaker. An amount of four million five hundred and sixty four thousand three hundred and fifty two dollars was expended from the training tour to the time Ghana exited from the main tournament. Mr. Speaker, now the breakdown and here the details. Airfare, $924,168. Per diem for players, $187,050. Per diem for technical staff, $129,600. Per diem for additional technical staff, $90,750. Winning bonus for players, $95,405. Winning bonus for technical team, 347207. Winning bonus for additional technical team, 17700 that's $177,000. Accommodation, and here includes pre-tournament camping, and of course camping facilities, also for the, for the playing body, and of course the main tournament itself for members of the GA field, some who were there, old players who were there, some of them, Ghana Supporters Union, Ministry officials, journalists, and of course, members of parliament. And that amount is $1,143,509. Medicals, across board, $44,574. Visa fees, $8,541. Internal transportation, $43,092. Incidentals, $42,057. Dollars. So total is, as I said, four five four six five three five zero. I repeat, four five four five six four three five two. Four million four hundred and six thousand dollars. <laughs> so the keep the difference here, the difference here of six three five million dollars and four six four million dollars we will turn to Gavin Chest. That's the difference of one million seven nine dollars we will turn to Gavin Chest. That is the difference. But the ranking member of the Youth and Sports Committee, Kobna Men Sawuyume, wants the ministry to provide a detailed breakdown of the amount spent on the team. Uh, what was presented to us today, um, apparently uh, um, to them, because we are also hearing other figures, that uh, that was what was spent. And so we will do our further work in terms of oversight, and uh, possibly by the close of the week, we'll come up with uh, what we think are uh, findings also. Um, uh, the worry is how um, items have been lumped up together. We would want to know the um, uh, breakdown of the figures as was called by myself and then the other uh, contributors so that we can then situate uh, in terms of what the minister himself actually stated that he is for uh, three things and one of which is value for money and then uh, we all then can uh, speak to it. We want these figures at least uh, breakdown for us to then understand.
you know, what went into, for instance, uh, the players, what went into those itemized uh, uh, line items, those line items, about six of them. We would want to find out, um, you know, what um, by way of uh, uh, programs that have been outlined to be implemented, the figures associated with those programs and all that. That is what we do. That is why I think, um, just to speak the minds of the people out there, is that, yes, how much did it cost the taxpayer? And that is what we are responsible for, by our oversight. And so we were there, we saw a few things, uh, definitely we will not have hands-on in terms of the exact figures that were spent. And so we can speak to it. And I think the chairman also indicated that the committee will start doing some work. I'm just hoping that he will call a meeting as quickly as possible so we can begin to delve into some of the matters. And whilst we're also looking out for those who will give us and feed us with some information so that we can also be able to, you know, see the, the, the real issues. Now let's talk about governance now. And former Minister of State and Ambassador to South Africa, Kwesi Ahoy wants politicians to stop undermining a rubbishing project started by their predecessors. He says deliberate attempts by some politicians to paint a picture to Ghanaians that former President Mills and John Mahama did nothing during their term in office is disingenuous. He was speaking at a ceremony to mark seven years since the demise of President John Evans at Mills. Political leadership and nation building is a continuous program and so we should see signs of continuity and when when a group comes and tries to destroy and undermine and ridicule everything that the predecessor did it doesn't augur well for us as a country because then it will be done to you too right so sometimes it's good to stay back a bit and give space for those who have the chance to lead the country to fill that space but they must fill the space with honesty and integrity is that not what we are seeing today no far away from it i mean everything that mahama did everything that professor Mills did is being rubbish as if they didn't do anything and that's only one class of people who know it all no one person in this world knows it all and you can't do it all so so long as we carry on with that attitude, this country will remain as backward as ever. I, I, I feel sad when today, for example, I hear my president, Akufuado, ask Mahama to give him one policy in Agrek that he put in place to, to, to move our culture forward. I feel very sad for Akufuado to ask this question. It's either he wasn't living in this country or he just decided to play mischief. It shouldn't be like that. You take over and go ahead with what you are doing, but don't ridicule, don't condemn what happened. That was the minister for Agri, under Mills and partly under uh, uh, Mahama. So I know what we did. You're talking about rearing for food and uh, whatever. Yeah. I gave picks out to the whole of Ghanaian farmers. Go and check with every farmer. I gave small ruminants, I gave cockerels. We have done these things, it's just a repetition, but that's what it should have been. It should have been a continuity, right? But don't say nothing was done. If you don't know, check. It's always important to check your fat before you open your mouth, right? And that is not what we are saying. That too. is not what we are saying. But that is also not to say that there were no ills in the past. Things there were might have Ills. yes. Things have, have condemned those things that were bad in the past. Yes, and and go praise those that were good in the past, and then build on those that were good. Now, before we go, a 14-year-old boy who was kidnapped in January this year has been reunited with his family after several months wandering the streets of the western regional capital, Takrade. Kunja Sante was picked up on his way home from school at Kaswa in the central region and was sent to Takrade. Though he managed to escape, he could not find his way home until he ran into a neighbor. Ifwa Evans Chinnery has this report about it. Media reports on kidnappings have increased in recent times in Ghana, causing a wave of anxiety amongst Ghanaians. Almost 70 kidnapping cases were recorded in 2018. The whereabouts of three Ghanaian girls kidnapped in Takradi are still unknown after several months. A 30-year-old Indian man was kidnapped in Kumasi in April by men who demanded $500,000 ransom. 
Many of these cases are worrying. However, luck eluded kidnappers who tried to abduct 14-year-old Kojo Asante and his three friends who were pushed into a vehicle to Takrade on their way back from school. They escaped as soon as the vehicle they were traveling in parked close to a bush. Kojo Asante narrates his ordeal. When I, when I went to Kaswa, I saw a certain man standing and was in need of help. He was carrying two load of uh, box, and I, and he said I should help him with the load. Then when I carried the box, we went to a car. The car was Toyota his, but I didn't check the number. So when when we went to, we, we were close to the car, so he said I should put the load inside the car. So when I put I put the load, in, then he pushed me inside the car. Then he closed the gate. Then I said. Please, where are you sending me to? He said I should keep quiet. Then I started, I started hitting the car. So, how the car is? Uh, when I, when I, even when I hit her, you, you not hear anything. So we went, for, we went a very long distance, we went far away. Then we, we reached a certain place. He said we should get down. We should all get down. One was with a knife, but he didn't use it. So he went, he said, we should all follow. Two were at the back of us and one was in front of us, so we went. So we were going, we went to a certain place, bush, it was like someone's farm. So I decided to run away. Kojo says after escaping, he could not find his way home, so he hustled on the streets of Takwadi to survive before he was finally reunited with his family. We saw uh, Kia. I told the man that we are going to Accra. Then the man said, he will never, he is not going to Accra. He is going to Takradi. So if you go to Takradi, I was scared. Then I said, okay, then let's go to Takradi. We didn't know any place. So we are just roaming about there. I saw a certain man. Then I asked him to give me his phone to make a call. Then he said, no, I'm a thief. So he never, he will not give him his phone. So I went to a woman. Then I said, I'm calling my mother, so he should call her for me. One man came and said, these people, that's how they are. His mother is excited. She expressed her gratitude to all those who helped her through her unbearable ordeal. And that's it for the news this morning. But of course, the show continues with the newspaper review in just a moment. Mamavi joins me for that. Stay exactly where you are. So much to talk about from today's papers. <laughs>